Right, so, hello, Aru here, and today we'll be talking about the newest banner, the Born of Ocean Swell, which is Eula's banner, along with a bunch of 4 stars, and her weapon banner, along with also a bunch of 4 stars. Right, in this video I'll be talking about the pros and cons of each 4 star character, as well as the pros and cons of each 4 star weapon in the weapon banner and how these 4 stars would fit with Eula's kit, with Eula as a character as well as team comps for Eula when you get her or starting off with the 5 star is Eula Eula is a great 5 star character and she is also a claymore user now, if you don't know about claymores they do a lot of damage to shields Geo shields, especially, they stagger your enemies very easily, as well as do a lot of damage in the fewest hits possible. I'm talking about bros, Eula is a physical damage and a cryo unit. Now, if you didn't notice the abyss, physical damage and cryo is pretty meta at the moment, since you'll be fighting the abyss lectors. If you haven't fought the Abyss Lectors, they have Electro status and they have a huge Electro Shield when they are low on HP. And the things you will need to break that shield is Cryo and or Pyro. Well, actually every element can make a dent on their shield, but Cryo or Pyro does a lot more, or a little bit more than all the others. Next pro is that she is a waifu. Okay. Now, her being a waifu makes it all the better because that's the point of playing the game, isn't it, right? Collecting characters, collecting weapons, collecting waifus and husbandos in the game. Right. These are all the pros, but we do not know how she will be playing once we get her. We have no idea how her damage is going to be, so all the pros are going to be a speculation. Now, going into the cons, again, like I've said, we have no idea how she plays yet because all we've seen is her trailer and from her trailer, it seems like she can kill the, <laughs> the what's that, the Ruin Grader by not moving and letting something explode, <clears throat> which is totally fine, but we have no idea how to play her just yet. If you really want to play Eula and use her right away, I suggest just pull her, just pulling for her because hey, you want the character, right? So you might as well just pull. But if you are a meta player and you want to know who does the best damage and who does <laughs> and who beats the abyss floor twelve the quickest, you might want to wait for other videos to be put up when Eula's banner comes out. Why would you wait? Because if you pull for Eula right away and you have no idea how to play her and then start building her, you might end up not liking her damage, not liking her skills, not even liking her playstyle. Yeah, hey, you're basically wasting your primo gems at that point for pulling just because you pulled for one character. Okay, the next character we'll be talking about the first 4 star and that is Xin Yan or Shin Yan, the rock and roll. Yeah, the rock and roll gal. Starting off with Sin Yan's pros, she has a decent shield. Why is her shield decent? It is pyro. And when your shield is pyro, it will also work with the abyss and take out those abyss lectors in the abyss or in any part of the game. She is also a physical damage character. Now if you check her skills, she does physical damage in her ultimate here. There you go. Her ultimate deals physical damage. Now that is pretty, uh, I don't know, pretty meta since the new update for the abyss is whenever you hit something enough times with physical damage, it's going to explode with physical damage, which works well in the abyss. If you have Zinyan, it's pretty good. You can get more constellations, but if you're gonna get more constellations, then you might as well rush all the way to T6 because of that charge attack gain from her defense. That's 50%. That's, she's basically Noel, but she's physical damage and she is Pyro. 
Now cons, if you're going to build her as a DPS, it will have to cost you a lot of artifacts, a lot of constellations, and most likely a 5 star weapon, which I do not have. <laughs> she's also weird because although she's pyro and she can apply pyro to enemies and then have Eula use melt against the enemy, Eula is still a physical damage character, which is very contradictory, if you ask me, to her kit, having seen Yan in your team. Next is that her shield, although she has a shield, it has the lowest HP. You can see her death and the percentage is very low compared to all the others like Zhongli here at level 1 <laughs> with pretty much the highest shield and then coming in at second is Noel and then Diona here you go Diona and coming in last is Nyan so she has the lowest shield the next character we'll be going over is going to be Beido Beido is an electro character and she is also a claymore user Mm. So starting with her pros, yes, she is a good electro DPS. Like I said, she can also be a sub DPS for your main DPS, which is Eula. She pairs well with Eula, with Eula using her Stormbreaker. Now her Stormbreaker, if you did not know yet, starts off with an explosion and then it deals lightning damage every hit to enemies. Now if you already have Beidou and you're already building her, then good for you, because if you get constellations for Beidou, she will provide a shield at constellation 1 and her lightning attacks will jump to 2 additional targets at level 2. Other than that, all you're going to need is C2 basically. Everything else is some extra damage for Beidou. Now why do we think that Beidou is also a good character in this banner? That is because the weapon in the weapon banner is also leaned into her favor which is the rain slasher there you go right there a rain slasher does more damage to any units affected by electro or hydro if you get dupes of that you can put it on beido if you get dupes of beido beido gets more powerful and you basically have another dps or sub dps we'll be moving on to her cons now sadly beido costs a lot of investment to make her damage higher apart from her Artifacts, you're going to have to need good 4 star weapon if you don't have any yet. If you don't have a crit weapon or crit damage weapon, crit rate weapon like the Serpent Spine or the Black Cliff Sword, Great Sword, I mean, you're going to have to drown yourself in the <laughs> Electro Domain and finding some proper artifacts that roll every crit damage and every crit rate possible. <clears throat> but hey, she still does a lot of damage on her own, and if you can build her about about 50% and 120 that, that's pretty good already yeah that that's basically it for her cons next we'll be moving on to there he is sing Cho, the water boy the book boy now sing Cho is a really good support a good dps even a good unit all around now first we'll be talking about sing Cho's pros right like i said a while ago he is a good support a good dps a good sub dps he can do pretty much everything Especially with his kit, he has pretty good damage. Now another pro for Ping Cho is that his weapon is also in the banner, which is the Sacrificial Greatsword. Now so the, the Sacrificial Greatsword is really good because you want to be spamming your E with Sing Cho to keep up it, to keep up his ultimate. Now if you didn't know about his E, his E has a really long cooldown and Sacrificial Greatsword is going to help you greatly, immensely even if you have this weapon. Next is that Eula works well with Sing Cho because of Perma Freeze Comp. The enemy that you hit with Cryo and Hydro will be frozen and when you hit the enemy with a Claymore user, let's say this is Eula, let's say this is Eula, you hit that frozen enemy, right? The damage from that will become not just a normal attack but it will be a shatter so, and it is based on elemental mastery if you have elemental mastery great but the perma free slash shatter is going to work very well with Ching Cho and Eula since you can pretty much freeze them all the time and then smack them <laughs> with your sword and then proc shatter next is his cons sadly for Ching Cho you will only need one of him 
to make him work as a support or sub DPS I mean if you want him to be DPS then you're going to need more constellations of course his constellations work around more swords and more hydro resist damage uh, hydro resist reduction for the enemies as well as yeah giving more swords yeah like I said if you want him to be DPS then you need you're gonna have to get more constellations but if you want him to support your Eula as someone who spams his ultimate and spams his E a lot, then you are, you're only going to need one. Any other constellation is just going to be a damage boost, which is great, but you won't need it since you're going to be doing most of the damage with Eula. Another con is that you're going to need, quote unquote, need sacrificial sword. Now, why will you need sacrificial sword? Like I said a while ago, his E cooldown is very long. It's 21 seconds. Now you cannot do anything. With Ping Cho after you use E and then wait for your Q to go up. So that is why you will need Sacrificial Sword. That's pretty much it for Ping Cho. You're not going to need anything else apart from a Sacrificial Sword. At least one if you're just going to make it work. Then get more refinements later. That's going to be it for all the characters. Overall, I think Eula Banner is pretty good. 2 out of 3 of the 4 stars and the banner is very... Well, well, how do I say this? It works very well with Eula since you have Beido for Superconduct and she's a really good sub DPS as well as main DPS after you use Eula. And then you also have Jingcho which can proc Electro Charge with Beido and Shatter with Eula. And he's also a great support so you're gonna need him. The only character that the only character that doesn't work with Eula is Sinyan. So it's pretty contradictory. I think they put it there just so you don't feel bad that you don't get Eula or you get to use Sinyan. There you go. Alright, so next we'll be moving on to the weapon banner. Now the weapon banner is pretty good. So if you got the characters here and then you all and you, and then you got Eula. Then you're also going to pull for the weapon. All these weapons here are gonna work pretty well. Pretty well. <clears throat> with your team. Now first weapon is going to be Rust. Now Rust is a very good weapon for all of your DPS units that use a bow. Let's say that you have units like Fischl which really work well with Eula because of, like I said a while ago with Beido, she's also Electro, it works well because of Superconduct. Now she does more damage and she does more damage on her own and her Superconduct does more damage. So if you got Fischl then great, if you only have Amber then might as well give it to her because she's pretty great anyway. Next is the Sacrificial Sword and the Sacrificial Fragments now. I think that Sacrificial Sword and Sacrificial Fragments is a must-have weapon because the extra E for chance is really good damage for pretty much any unit that you have in your roster. Let's say you have Sacrificial Bow, you put it on Bennett, you get an extra E, and you can spam his ult even more. Then Sacrificial Fragments for let's say you pulled the Yanfei banner and got Yanfei, you can spam her E more which does more damage. It works with every character with every unit that uses a sword or a catalyst. Next is going to be Dragon's Bane. Now Dragon's Bane, I don't think that it's a good cara is a good weapon unless you already built your Shangling or if you have Hu Tao and you build Hu Tao. Since Shangling can proc Pyro and you can use Eula to uh, proc melt and do a lot of damage but that's going to be a problem because she does physical damage and you want her to do physical damage instead of cryo her E it does not have a buff where all her attacks turn into cryo unless you put Chong Yun, which it's an extra unit you won't need it next is going to be rain slasher now, Beido is a electro user and Rain Slasher gives more damage to any enemy that is affected by Electro or Hydro. In my opinion, I think that Rain Slasher is the best weapon. If you get a lot of dupes, then start building Beido like right now, right right after you get those dupes. I mean, Rain Slasher, you put that on, slap it on onto Beido, and then there's your there's your there's your cake. Right there you have two cakes: Beido cake and Yula cake. Right. Okay. Let's summarize that again, shall we? 
get Beidou to make Superconduct and then get her weapon, the Rain Slasher, that may, that works well if you haven't gotten Eula yet and if you have Eula, all the more damage. After you got Eula and Beidou and you have your Rain Slasher, get Fish, you have your Maximum Superconduct team. If you're going for Shatter, then get Xingqiu first and then get his Sacrificial Sword once you get Eula. And then you have, and then there's your shatter comp right there. Xenyan is the worst unit unless you have, or unless you really want to build her, that's fine. And Dragon's Bane is the worst weapon unless you have Hu Tao or Shangling in your team. Yeah, well, I guess that's going to be it for the weapon banner and the character banner on Yula. I hope you guys, I wish you guys rather best of luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi. See ya, bye!